you're a physiotherapist or physical therapist with a wrist or hand patient in front of you and you want to use special tests in order to differentiate what condition it might be, this video is going to go through all the special tests you can use and what pathologies you'd be looking for. Okay, so for Finkelstein's test for De Quervian sinusinovitis, we're going to take the thumb in between the fingers and we're going to ulna deviate the hand at the wrist and we're going to look for pain in and around the radial styloid area through here. You can do that in an extended position of the hand as well or elbow as well and that's going to create often a little bit more tension. The other thing you can do is a resisted thumb test. So if you thumb up towards you, okay, holding that position there for dequervians the and then maintain that, don't let me push you down. Again, you're looking for pain in and around this radial styloid area. That would be a positive sign for dequervians tenosynovitis. Okay, so for our OA or instability at the first CMC joint, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically uh, take hold of the thumb at the MCP joint and we're gonna create an axial load. So we're gonna compress through the thumb joint and then we're gonna rotate around. So basically creating some compression into the thumb joint area itself and then rotating, it's like a grind test. And with someone with OA pain, that's gonna be painful around that first carpometacarpal joint. For our lunotriquetral ligament tear test, we're going to take a <clears throat> pincer grip with the thumb and index finger of the lunate and then a pincer grip of the thumb and fin index finger of the pisiform and type triquetrum. We're going to stabilise through the, the lunate, so just holding this hand through the lunate, and we're going to create an AP force at the triquetrum and pisiform area. And we're going to look for instability, feelings of pain and laxity come from this hand compared to the other side. This is quite linked with um, uh, TFCC injuries as well, which we'll go on to the test in another video. So for an ulna grind or TFCC compression test, we would hold the wrist close to the joint line and we would create a ulna deviation at the wrist. So we're gonna we'll create an ulna deviation and then compress axially. So we take the hand into this position and then compress into that position. And we're looking for pain in that ulna area of the wrist, the ulna styloid area of the wrist. This would be an indication of a TFCC injury. So the piano key test is gonna look at um, distal radio ulna joint injuries and instability, as well as TFCC injuries as well. What we're gonna do with this is we're gonna uh, come to the radial styloid and stabilize through the radial styloid. With the other hand, we're gonna take a pinch grip of the ulna styloid, and we're gonna stabilize with our hand on the radial side and create an AP force at the ulna side of the wrist. And then we'll be looking for pain, instability, feelings of apprehension around the uh, ulna side of the wrist. For our supination lift test, um, you can grab the underside of the table or you can grab the examiner's hand. So if we come into a 90 degree position at the elbow with the, the hand supinated and then create a resistance to this position. So don't let me move you down. This causes a load of the TFCC and dorsal impingement, which causes pain if there's a peripheral dorsal tear. So if there's injuries to this, it will cause load through there and therefore a positive test would be pain. So the Watson test for scaphoid instability or scaphoid instability is one where the patient sits with their elbow on the couch. We're gonna press the scaphoid tuberosity at the palmar aspect dorsally. So we're gonna find the scaphoid and then we're gonna basically hold that and palpate dorsally, so pushing with this in this direction, whilst taking the hand from extension and ulnar deviation to flexion and radial deviation. So we're gonna create this dorsal pressure from an extension uh, ulnar deviation to flexion and radial deviation. And 
and we'd be looking for a thunk or an instability around here, especially if you remove your thumb with that from that pressure. So with Phelan's tests, the patient will take their hands into maximal flexion, elbows down as much as you feel able to do and hold that position. And then you will be looking for compression of the median nerve, so therefore giving symptoms into that median nerve distribution, pins and needles, paresthesia, those sorts of symptoms. Can do reverse Phelan's as well, so that would be in this position, and again, you're looking for that pain um, or reproduction of their neurological symptoms when you do these tests. So we've looked at a Tennell's test at the cubital tunnel. You can also do a Tennell's test at the median nerve. So again, what we would do for this one would be, you, you can create a little bit of extension through the wrist if you want to, if not, keep it neutral. <clears throat> and then we would basically tap our fingers in the distribution of that median nerve for a period of at least 30 seconds and we would be looking for the reproduction of symptoms tingling into the hand a median nerve symptoms into the hand would be a positive test. Goyon's tunnel test would be another test for the nerve and ulnar nerve pathology so we would tap around the Goyon's tunnel at the wrist on this ulnar border looking for the reproduction of symptoms. If you do this for 30 seconds and you get the reproduction of, of symptoms into the ulnar nerve or up into the, the arm here, um, paresthesia, pins and needles and or pain, that would be a positive test for irritation of the ulnar nerve at the wrist. So Froman sign is a sign for ulnar nerve pathology. So with this, we would get the pa patient to hold a piece of paper with their thumb and index finger, and then I'm gonna try and pull the paper away and say to Kate, don't let me pull the paper away. Now a positive test for this would be that the thumb flexes. So the thumb actually comes into more of a flexed position like that. And that's because the ulnar nerve is irritated and therefore the thumb flexors have to get involved in the movement um, rather than being able to keep this uh, downward position. So for extensor carpi ulnaris injuries, we can look at thickening of the tendon sheath and also a subluxing tendon. What you're looking for is the subluxing of that extensor carpi ulnaris tendon through here. So it's from a extended and radial deviated position over into a flexed and ulnar deviated position, checking for subluxation of that tendon. If you enjoyed that video on hand and wrist special tests, you'll love the one on the screen now, which is all about elbow special tests. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon, then you won't miss any of our content about physiotherapy and fitness, and I will see you all next time.